Uh, hey, good morning. Um, we're going to kick things off here in uh, just a minute. We got uh, JD Teeter here from PowerMation. So we're going to give it another minute or so for a few other people to join us. And in the meantime, uh, John is going to throw a uh, quick question up onto the screen uh, about why you're here. Um, so if you take a second to go ahead and click into the, one of the radio buttons about uh, you know what is interesting um, to you about the seminar. And then uh, once we're done with that, we'll go ahead and kick the uh, webinar off. Hey John, I don't know if the poll is open. It says closed and then yeah, going. it was it was double clicked on by by another person, so it actually closed itself out before uh, before people got a chance to vote on it. Oh, can we kick it off again? We'll have to, <laughs> we'll have to do a, um, a person dedicated to that poll to kind of put it up and and put it away. Uh, it is closed on my side. I'd have to basically restart the, the system. Uh, webinar has a pretty set way in which it does those polls. Um, we can still show the information. I think this is a good point to uh, pull out questions, pull out the chat, and introduce to that as well, and just uh, allow that. So I'll share kind of some of the topics, uh, and instead of clicking on it, just kind of entering in the chat or entering in the questions. Uh, whichever you guys want to kind of direct people towards, uh, maybe kind of put a response in one of those two sections. Got it. Gotcha. All right, we're <clears throat> three minutes after the hour. Uh, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and uh, kick off. Uh, so, hey, good morning, everybody. This is uh, JD Teeter, one of the business development managers uh, for Motion at PowerMation. Um, uh, Mike Westwater and I will be acting as your host. So we're going to talk about stepper motor operations. A uh, quick infomercial regarding PowerMation, if you're not familiar with us, we're a technology and solution focused uh, distributor of controls and automation, uh, serving the upper Midwest since about 1961. Uh, and during that time, we've maintained a position on the forefront of manufacturing and pushing ourselves to deliver innovative uh, automated solutions with exceptional customer service. So if this is your first time with us, uh, you know, today after the presentation, please check us out www.powermation.com. We're joined today by one of our premier motion partners, Oriental Motor. Uh, presenting this morning is going to be Austin Perry, Dom Gianni, and John Struckel, located in Oriental Motors' uh, U.S. headquarters there in over in Elk Grove, Illinois. So our adventure is going to begin this morning with a little bit of background on Oriental Motor. There's 70 plus years of uh, automation excellence. We're going to jump into some applications, talk about characteristics, talk about stepper servos, how and when to utilize them, which one goes with which application. Uh, and as we go through this morning, if you have any questions on the uh, should be on the right side of your screen, there's a chat area. Go ahead and throw your questions into that area. One of the moderators will review that and we'll answer those as best we can. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn the mic over to Oriental Motor and their team. Thanks, guys. Thanks, JD. Um, as JD said, uh, there will be three of us from Oriental Motor here today. Uh, my name is Austin Perry. I'm one of the sales engineers that takes care of uh, the Minnesota region as well as Iowa and the Dakotas with PowerMation. Uh, my counterpart, Dom, uh, who you'll be hearing from later, uh, takes care of the Illinois and Wisconsin branch. Um, as JD mentioned, we have John Struckel here. Uh, he's our technical support supervisor and will be giving the presentation today. Uh, we've got some great things to go over with, uh, you know, what a stepper is and, and the benefits and, and how it compares to a, a servo and a servo step hybrid, um, which we'll get into at the end. Um, without further ado, I will uh, let John take the, take the floor. Perfect. Thank you, Austin. Thank you, JD. 
Uh, as mentioned, yes, we're going to be talking about information about stepper motors, um, differences between stepper motors and other positioning control devices, uh, and also look at some of the improvements, um, implementations, so applications and things like that, as discussed already. Uh, got a, a little bit of goals here to go through, reviewing the typical breakdown of when to use servo versus when to use stepper. Uh, and in kind of that discussion, we'll also talk about the comparison between benefits of servo versus benefits of the stepper. From there, that'll lead us into some discussions on improvements that Oriental Motors done to our stepper motor lineups. Uh, we'll provide some examples of applications and usages of those stepper motors and of those uh, beneficial additions and improvements. Uh, and from there, that'll take us into the Alpha Step product line. Talk about Oriental Motors Alpha Step stepper motor product. And we'll finish off with that conclusion of that comparison of servo motors and the Alpha Step. So when we're looking at positioning control devices, um, positioning control units, um, there's really going to be those two big names in the market, that servo motor or that stepper motor, and when you use which one. Um, as we can kind of see here in the graphical breakdown, on the far left, we have a driver and a motor for the servo motors. In the middle, we have drivers and motors for stepper motors. And on the far right, we have a driver and a motor for the alpha step system. Um, so overall, again, that motor being paired with a driver, whether it's an enclosed driver or an open circuit driver, uh, it's really, you know, a similar setup depending on which way we go, whether we go servo or stepper. Um, so oftentimes we look at this kind of consideration in the applications and try to determine which one we're gonna go with. If we're gonna go the route of the servo or go the route of the stepper. Um, and as the industry changes and as improvements get made, those lines begin to blur between when you use a servo and when you use a stepper. We'll talk about kind of those typical breakdowns, but also that breaking of the mold um, that's what's going on in, in the new releases of new product lines and new developments. Um, and we'll talk about that um, as the wrap up with that alpha step line. So to get discussing between these two systems or between these three systems, actually, uh, I want to talk about first and foremost, just that kind of reference to some of the terminology, some of the technology as well. Um, so what you'll hear when you're talking about positioning control devices is the statement between open loop and closed loop. So here we have a simplified block diagram of an open loop system, which is just taking information in from your upper level of control or your PLC, sending that information and command to the driver, driver commanding the motor to go to its specific position. So it's open loop, we're just sending the information down from the upper level of control to the motor, making the motor run, and we're not gonna get any feedback from that motor back to the upper level of controls. So that's gonna be just running open loop, and that's gonna be the typical operation of your stepper motor system. Now looking at closing the loop on systems, or looking at what's gonna make, um, typically when referenced closed loop, it's gonna be related to servo motors. And on those systems, essentially what you're doing is you're adding some kind of encoder some kind of feedback system to the back side of the motor so that the motor can relay information back to either the driver uh, or the PLC. Now you can have closed loop uh, stepper motors as well by adding an encoder um, and then doing the corrective action. Um, but when you have a servo motor, servo motors are gonna come equipped with that encoder. Usually it's gonna be an absolute uh, encoder. So another breakdown between servos and steppers is going to be their construction. Um, depending on who you ask, one person may say uh, a different reason for why it becomes a servo motor, but the way that Orient motor is going to break down those differences between servo and stepper motor um, comes first and foremost at its construction. On the left-hand side, we have the construction of a servo motor, which is going to consist of a permanent magnet rotor, and that's going to be radially magnetized. You have a switching sequence that happens from the servo driver, <laughs> commanding it to go its specific positioning amounts. Now on the right-hand side, we have the structure and breakdown of the stepper motor system, which is gonna consist of laminated rotors and stators, 
And in those laminations, we're going to have a uh, radio, uh, I'm sorry, axillary magnetized magnet. So we're going to have a north rotor cup and a south rotor cup on the rotor. So that's going to be the, that, that really big breakdown between servos and steppers. Steppers being manufactured and designed to have those steps involved. When we talk about stepper motors, we talk about them creating that step motion and that step motion generated from the teeth of the rotor cup and the teeth of the stators. <clears throat> now, another comparison difference here is going to be how these systems position. So servo motor is going to be positioning based on an error-based system, getting feedback from that encoder, sending information to the drive, correcting that position, and attaining its position. On the reverse side for stepper motors, um, they're going to be sent position information so that they do a certain number of steps to achieve the position amount that you're looking for. So stepper motors, they're designed uh, mechanically for that positioning, and servo motors are electrically positioned via that switching sequence. So from here, I want to take it into the typical breakdown of the servo versus the stepper systems. Um, so servo motors, they're typically going to be used uh, and typically recommended, you know, as a simplicity statement for applications that are above that 1000 RPM speed. Servo motors being able to achieve that higher torque and higher peak torque over a wider range um, is really what that kind of stipulation is saying. We're going to recommend them for that application. On the reverse side, again, stepper motors, um, the typical breakdown for them is going to be for point-to-point -point motions, for stop-and-go applications, uh, or anything that needs that higher torque value at lower speeds. So going into where this information comes from, uh, it comes from that breakdown of the speed torque curves of both of those systems. So here I have a speed torque curve on the left-hand side of a servo motor, and on the right-hand side a speed torque curve of a comparable stepper motor system. Looking at the typical um, servo motor speed torque curve, we get two different regions. We have our continuous duty region as well as our limited duty region. And when we're sizing and selecting for a servo, we need to take into consideration that continuous duty region so that we make sure that the system can operate continuously for that application. Here, looking at the continuous duty region, uh, we see roughly 0.6 newton meters of torque is going to be able to ma be maintained out to 3,000 RPMs of speed. Uh, and then as we go a little bit faster than 3,000 RPMs, the torque starts to decrease uh, and maybe ending at about 0.4 or 0.35 newton meters of torque at that 5,500 RPM speed. So if we take that same uh, torque value, that 0.6 newton meters of torque, and uh, plot that on the speed torque curve of the stepper motor system, we can see that for the stepper motor system, that 0.6 newton meters of torque, uh, it has more than that at the slower speeds. However, in, in this case, we're looking at 900 RPM. It starts to drop below that 0.6 newton meters of torque. So again, that's where that kind of simplified separation of servo versus stepper happens when we look at you know, things above 1,000 RPM or things below 1,000 RPM. However, that doesn't take into consideration the other advantages and considerations for each of the systems. So I want to go a little bit deeper and break down those systems and talk about advantages and considerations uh, and talk about understandings of those two systems so that we can look at recommending them for applications. So starting first with servo motor systems, looking at the advantages of servos, uh, we saw from the speed torque curve, they're able to achieve higher speeds. Um, they're available also in higher torque ranges. So again, that um, larger motors can actually be produced in those servo motors, creating a larger watt motor. Some other advantages here, they're built with that encoder. So they're built with that feedback. They are a closed loop system. And they're also rated for continuous duty. Having that continuous duty region and that separation of the limited duty region. Some considerations for using servo motors, um, gain tuning, whether it's going to be automatic tuning from the driver or manual tuning from the driver, 
Um, some tuning is going to happen in order for the system to have the correct responsiveness um, to that commanded position. Uh, going along with gain tuning is the potential for the system to run into a hunting state, whether it's hunting at the standstill state uh, or hunting with the change of inertial load or that oscillation um, that that motor will have to a given point or at a given point. Another consideration for servos is going to be that initial cost investment that goes into that more complex system. So that cost upfront for that servo based system. Another point that I want to make on that system again uh, is that error based system. We'll talk about responsiveness of systems uh, and how that um, the fact that that servo system is relying on that error, that feedback to be that new commanded position uh, that interacts with certain applications. As far as lineups, uh, again, as mentioned at the start by JD, uh, Orienta Motor offers a wide variety of products. Um, one of those series being our servo motor products of offerings. Um, so we do offer our NX series, which is gonna cover the servo motor series. And that's gonna be a system that requires pulse and direction signals from the PLC. Muted. Moving on from there, um, looking at advantages and considerations of the stepper motor. So we raced off servo, now we're gonna be looking at the stepper motor system. So advantages of stepper motors, we're gonna have that good low speed torque. So as we saw from that speed torque curve, uh, much higher torques at that lower speed range below that 900 or 1000 RPM. Another advantage here is gonna be our high responsiveness. So since we're sending that command position of how many steps to go, it's gonna receive that and um, operate based on that command. So have that high response to the command position. On top of that, they're gonna be a simple system. So a simple system to integrate, a simple system to set up and maintain. They're also gonna have a more compact motor size. So saving that space in an application. Um, they're also gonna be a more cost-effective system and provide uh, what's gonna be stated as a complete stop. So, uh, no instances of that uh, hunting or oscillation at standstill. Some consideration for stepper motors, um, they do have less torque at higher speeds and their duty can be limited based on the temperature. So temperature is gonna be a thing for your standard stepper motor, making sure that it maintains within its operating temperature range. On top of that, uh, a consideration would be if the motor is stalled. So since there's no feedback in an open loop stepper motor, those stepper motors don't have a way of stating whether or not they're stopped. However, what you can do is you can get position feedback from a stepper motor system by adding an encoder to the backside of that motor. Some considerations with that is you're gonna also need to add an additional pulse counter as well as programming is gonna be needed in order to correct for that difference. So even though you're getting feedback from the system, also needing to correct that position so that you maintain um, the appropriate position that you're looking for for the application. <clears throat> Again, talking about lineups, our PKP series is gonna be our primary stepper motor series, offering standard uh, encoder options, options with electromagnetic brakes for vertical applications, there's also offerings for flat motor type. So again, talking about that compact size, even a more compact size is gonna come from that flat type, uh, otherwise known as pancake type stepper motor. Um, there's also gonna be geared motor options available to get even higher amounts of torque out. This reference, this is coming from our PKP brochure. Uh, you should be able to see um, some handouts on the right-hand side as well, or, or at least it's the right-hand side for me um, to check on the option for handouts and you should see there the PKP brochure, um, this reference to it coming from page two. In addition to that, we also have releasing of new gearboxes. So center shaft gearboxes that are gonna be spur gear. Um, we also have center shaft gearboxes that are gonna be planetary gears. So a lot of different options, a lot of different um, availabilities for different types of configurations for those stepper motors and applications. At this point, I do want to kick it over to Dom, the sales engineer for Orienta Motor, to talk a little bit about 
application breakdowns between servo motors and stepper motors. Hey, thanks, John. Appreciate it. <clears throat> All right, so um, what we can see here on this slide. Sorry, there we go. Um, thank you for unmuting me. Um, so what we can see on this slide are some common applications to give a more uh, visual representation for you guys. Um, on the left, you'll see servos. On the right, you'll see steppers. Um, just to clarify first, though, most applications um, can utilize both the stepper or the servo system. So if we look at the uh, robotic arm uh, in the servo uh, column, it's going to be that first page. Um, it does not need to be a servo system, for example. Um, we've worked in the past on robotic arms utilizing a stepper um, if it needed that high precision um, and eliminating the hunting and game tuning that, that John had spoken about. Um, and just to briefly review what John had talked about uh, so far, um, what defines when we could use a servo, we want to really evaluate the application and understand the requirements. Um, so if features such as high precision, high torque, high response time, uh, synchronization, all operating at low speed, uh, the steppers are going to be the ideal candidate, which we can see in some applications on the right-hand side. Um, servos are going to be ideal with high torque and high speed applications with feedback capabilities, um, but they do fall short in synchronization and response time. Um, it's just not in the servo world. It's, it, it's, it's not a strong suit in so many words. Um, looking at these pictures, though, um, servos are going to be high speed. So we got the robotic arm. Um, below that, we're going to have an XYZ gantry system um, and then a labeling um, system. So these are just some common applications that we've seen so far. Um, and then in the steppers, uh, steppers are going to really, um, really highlight start and stop um, operation. Um, so just going from A to B, no hunting for that position. Um, we can see here uh, the first image on the left is going to be a peristaltic pump um, where, where you need a precise movement to control position. Um, you're going to be controlling the position of that roller to accommodate a certain amount of fluid being pumped through. Um, if we look at the camera to the right, um, you need an exact position um, to take that money shot. You know, uh, So that's where you would really want to use a stepper over a servo where it might be hunting and shaking the camera. Um, looking at the liquid handler at the bottom left, um, that's also going to be an XYZ. Uh, I've, I've worked with XYZ uh, liquid handlers before um, using a stepper. Um, so it's not limiting to just a servo system that you could use. Um, and then finally, on the uh, bottom right is going to be a printer. So positioning, for example, maybe a printer head for precise movement um, and not causing the image to be blurry um, after it's printing due to hunting. Um, so again, these are just some applications that we've uh, that Oriental Motor and Powermation have worked with um, in the past. Um, it's just really a taste of various applications, though, um, that can utilize both a servo and a stepper system. Um, so yeah, uh, with that, I'll hand it back off to John. Thanks, John. Perfect. Thank you, Dom. Yeah. So going off of that, I want to just talk about some of those uh, improvements and advancements that Oriental Motors has gone through in our stepper motor products. Again, a lot of what we get um, on those kind of hesitations or concerns about stepper motors with applications um, typically run along the lines of uh, low torque in, in certain speed ranges, uh, temperature considerations are gonna be some of them, uh, vibration and noise, um, those are gonna be typically the main things that you hear um, as far as hesitations or complaints. That's what we hear in those different application breakdowns. Um, but as I mentioned at the start, um, uh, excuse me, advancements that happen with inside of stepper motors and advancements with happen inside of technology um, kind of start to break that mold and, and kind of allow those lines to start to blur between those different applications. So we see some overlaps, uh, especially when you, you take a simplification like CNC machines. Um, you know, you look at um, three different manufacturers and one might use a brushless system one might use a stepper motor, uh, and one might use a servo motor. So there's a lot of different um, utilizations of those systems. So in talking about uh, Oriental Motor and what we've done in the stepper motor, 
uh, if you look at basically the outside of a stepper motor from manufacturer A to manufacturer B, um, they're going to follow a similar look. It's, it's really hard to kind of tell the difference between a stepper motor from the outside. Um, and as the saying says, uh, it's not really on the outside what counts, it's what's on the inside that matters. So I want to talk about those improvements and just talk about some of the things that Oriental Motor has done on the inside of our stepper motors that create those advancements and create that um, new line of PKP stepper motors. <clears throat> so first and foremost, uh, we can talk about and briefly discuss about the air gap spacing. That's going to be the spacing between the rotor and the stator. So that has been uh, reduced, and by reducing that, you get a closer displacement between those two, which is going to result in a higher magnetic force between those two systems, between that rotor and the stator, um, which can provide a higher torque output from the motor. Going counterclockwise here, the mini connector type, um, this is going to be the new connection for the stepper motor, which is going to allow for a connection, but also give you the flexibility of a lead wire type, type stepper motor. Uh, oftentimes we see in applications um, a bent or a crimped or a stripped wire that causes the whole stepper motor to be replaced. So if there's any issues with um, the lead wires getting damaged, you can go ahead and, and take off the old cable and replace it with a new cable and not have to worry about replacing the whole system. <laughs> Continuing onward, some improved rigidity. So looking at the rigidity of the system, we'll talk about some application advantages there. Um, looking at increased capabilities for radial load and axial load. We also have higher winding density and optimized lamination structure. Um, in the new stepper motor system, it's going to be using a more high-powered neodymium iron boron magnet. And with that magnet comes the need to optimize the performance of that magnet. So redesign, restructure the system on the internals of the stepper motor so that we're gaining uh, as much torque at the output but while also maintaining precision in manufacturing to reduce vibration, which would then reduce the noise of the stepper motor system. So all in all, the advancements on the internal components of the stepper motor system, uh, as I mentioned, primarily is going to give you that benefit of higher torque. Um, but that statement of higher torque also results in added benefits. So on the left here, we can see a speed torque graph of two systems, um, the black lines being our older generation PK stepper motor, and the orange line being our new generation PKP stepper motor. And the thing to note about those two speed torque curves is if we look at the right-hand side, the black line is going to come from the larger stepper motor, so a NEMA 23 uh, stepper motor, and the orange line is going to come from a smaller NEMA 17 motor. So we're getting the same performance, roughly that same speed torque output from a smaller size stepper motor, which means we can start to downsize applications, start with even a smaller body, a smaller footprint in an application while still achieving the same torque performance of a larger previous generation stepper motor. So with that knowledge and thinking, I want to take that information and take it into some application examples. So. Kind of to, to simplify the application examples, I'm going to um, categorize them. Um, so looking at things like a belt pulley system or a conveyor system or a pipe heading application. A lot of the things that we hear about these um, and looking at specific examples of applications in these um, requirements that were needed for increasing the belt tension for saving space on the system as, as we compared again that manufacturer either going with servo, brushless, stepper, etc. Uh, and also reducing heat of the system. So taking the first example case, um, looking at improving the system here, uh, we have a belt pulley system that was experiencing issues with its old uh, motor solution because the belt was actually jumping teeth. So the mechanical component of the application wasn't able to maintain its integrity, wasn't able to maintain its accuracy, uh, and therefore, the actual rubber teeth were jumping on the application, causing the system to lose accuracy. So here, by going with that new PKP motor update, uh, the customer was able to um, improve and increase the overall belt tension in the system, which prevented those teeth from jumping, and it, it resulted in a higher accuracy and a higher reliability in that application.
as I mentioned before, generating that more torque also allows for differences. So we saw the difference of being able to downsize the motor. Um, what we're looking at here is the potential to reduce the heat generated in the system. So taking that same reference before, that NEMA 23 versus the NEMA 17 motor, um, here we're actually gonna use the same size motor. So a NEMA 23 motor for both systems, the old generation versus the new generation. Uh, the old generation here being in that dark blue and the new generation being in pink. So previously, two amps of current was needed for the old system to get 0.9 newton meters of torque and 1.65 amps of current was needed for the new system to get 0.91 newton meters of torque. And as a result, we have the comparison of the temperature rise in that graphical analysis. Uh, we can really see that difference in the overall system, the new PKP system having a much lower temperature rise in the application. Now, temperature is a big thing, as we mentioned at the start for stepper motors. Not only is it um, the duty cycle, cycle of the motor, um, being able to operate for a longer duty cycle, um, temperature also affects the overall life of your system, the overall bearing life and life of that stepper motor. Um, in this particular application as well, looking at a pipetting application, the reagents used inside of that pipetting application are actually sensitive to heat. So by reducing the overall heat uh, rise, overall that heat generation of the stepper motor, by reducing the current to the stepper motor, but still gaining that same torque output, we're able to minimize the effect of the temperature rise from the motor system involved and therefore allowing the reagents to not have an impact of that uh, heat in the application. So reducing the impact to the application. Looking at the other things um, that I said were, were typical call outs of stepper motors, looking at things like vibration uh, and even accuracy and noise, things like that all tie into that manufacturing, that precision, that stopping position, as well as the rotation of the stepper motor. So again, breaking down some simplified applications, uh, whether it's an arm rotation, a theta axis application, uh, camera focusing, or, or again, a, a similar or different pipetting application. Um, here, requirements in these systems, lowering vibration, as well as increasing stopping accuracy. So what those improvements provide, again, that manufacturing provides that lower vibration, that optimization, and that focus on um, maintaining a lower vibration of the system. Uh, another thing that goes into it, um, for these systems, if you look at that camera application that Dom mentioned, um, here just a simple um, panning camera application, whether it's in motion, you wanna make sure that the camera's not having uh, a shaky reference, so it's not hunting, uh, it's also not generating vibration from the system. Also, stopping accuracy can be important for those cameras depending on what they're focusing at a distance. Um, being off in that stop position can be the difference between being either focused properly or not focused properly. Similarly, with that stop position accuracy, uh, that pipetting application is a great example of maintaining that stop position accuracy and needing to make sure that it stops at the right position and positions appropriately, uh, whether it's a testing application, uh, liquid testing or anything like that, probe type of application. The last call out I wanna make to the uh, reference to vibration is gonna be the pairing of systems. Again, the stepper motor is only gonna be one component of the overall system. Uh, the secondary component there is gonna be the driver that's paired with the stepper motor. So here in the screen, uh, in the middle of the screen, I have a, a, a generalized uh, stepper motor driver and the overall stop position accuracy based on the positioning angle. Uh, and on the right-hand side, our CVD driver that's gonna be operating the same type of micro-stepping position. Uh, one way to reduce vibration in stepper motors is to do a micro-stepping application, to do a 1 8 step uh, or even sometimes a 1 16 step in order to try to reduce that vibration of the motion. So here by doing that micro-stepping in the general uh, system on the left, we can see a much um, more volatile stopping accuracy. Whereas going with that PKP and CVD system, we can see a higher precision, 
higher stopping position accuracy even while microstepping the system. So you're not losing that stopping accuracy if you're still looking to do that microstepping to also aid in lowering the vibration. Vibration being kind of one of those main concerns and main things that happen inside of the stepper motor, I do want to quickly break that down and kind of talk about the background behind it. Uh, in the stepper motor system, you're going to have three different regions which are going to generate that vibration, whether it's that low end speed range, because uh, we are doing that step motion, um, in the mid range speed, which is going to be the typical one that people try to avoid with micro stepping. Um, that mid range speed is going to be based on residence characteristics as well as torque ripples. Um, and then that high end speed, that very last and third peak point being uh, back EMF voltage that's being supplied from the motor back to the driver. So being considerate of all these different vibration characteristics, these vibration points um, in our improvements, in our adaptations to the PKP pairing with that CVD driver, um, we looked to reduce the overall impact of vibration on those parts. Um, by doing that, looking at our smooth drive operation for that initial uh, low speed, and then also doing current adjustments and making sure that we're adjusting for that back EMF and adjusting for the resonance to maintain as little vibration as possible. As a result, um, a reference to the vibration characteristics of our previous generation stepper motor. So that again is gonna be in the dark blue region. Uh, so seeing that high peak vibration that stop response uh, characteristic or that step motion characteristic at the start, uh, as well as a very high peak vibration at the very end when we see that back EMF. So overall, all those improvements that went into the stepper motor system, looking at now the orange, I'm sorry, orange pink graph, um, that's now gonna be the lower vibration of the system. Uh, another important thing to note here is gonna be our green graph. Uh, overlaid on the other graphs is going to be a five-phase stepper motor. Um, another uh, presentation can be made on the differences and comparisons of two-phase versus five-phase uh, and the utilizations of each of those in applications. Uh, however, what we can see is that improvement of the two-phase stepper motor from the dark blue to the pink um, really puts it in that category of five-phase stepper motor. So really uh, improving the overall operation and minimizing the vibration of those two-phase stepper motors uh, and really even getting out to that higher speed range. As, as we called before, that 1000 RPM typically being um, a, a harder part to maintain for stepper motor systems. Again, with those improvements, being able to look at potentially expanding that speed torque curve characteristic range of a standard stepper motor. So looking at a summary comparison table, um, there's a lot of companies that have gone through these. Um, again, it's a simplified summary of those differences uh, of um, things that a servo motor can uh, have an advantage towards and things that a stepper can have advantage towards. Uh, a lot of what we've discussed today, again, that servo being that closed loop system, also having that high torque at higher speeds, so that superiority for long moves, fast moves, um, we showed it as the robotics applications will typically have those servo motor systems. And then for the stepper motor systems, those typical stop go applications uh, also being at that lower cost. So with these kind of comparisons and understandings in mind, uh, I wanna bring up the next system. And I'm gonna try this again. I'm gonna bring out another poll here. Um, and this poll referencing the information for our alpha step system. So question on the poll, um, go ahead, um, click on uh, one of the options or multiple options that they apply to you. Um, are you familiar with Oriental Motors alpha step motors? Um, some options there, not familiar, you've heard about it, you've recommended it before, uh, or you've used it before. I'm seeing so far a, a pretty even split. It looks like there's about a third of the percentage that's not familiar, a third of the percentage that's heard about it, and a third of the percentage that's recommended it before. So pretty good um, distribution of, of instances here. So 
With that in mind, I want to go ahead and go over that last section of this presentation, which is going to introduce and show the reference to the Alpha Step system. So again, another solution that's going to be provided for these position control applications. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Oriental Motor, we offer servo motor systems. We offer also stepper motor systems. Uh, and we also look at those considerations, those pros and those cons of those systems. So looking at the pros of the stepper, looking at the pros of the servo, um, what we did is then we tried to create a solution that's going to take the benefits of both of those systems and take as many benefits and put them into one new system as possible and eliminate as many cons as possible. <laughs> So what that introduces is our line of Alpha Step products. So Alpha Step is going to be an Oriental Motor brand of stepper motors. It's a stepper motor at its core, but it also features closed loop feedback, where feedback is going to be going to the driver. <clears throat> a little bit of background on the evolution of our Alpha Step system. Um, we actually released our first Alpha Step product as our AS series back in 1998. And this system was actually going to be that unique closed loop control. So again, that adaptation, taking the benefits of servo, the benefits of stepper, and trying to create this alpha step system. So it's that unique control that we created uh, without the need of tuning. So eliminating the tuning, um, still eliminating the hunting of the system that would happen in your servo system. As our second generation, we then released our a AR series. Um, that was released in 2007. AR is going to be our adaptation to look to make additional advancements here, and in this case, the advancement to making a continuous operation system. So we incorporated low heat generation technology in order for the Alpha Step system to also maintain a continuous duty application and operation. <coughs> And then the last thing here, uh, in 2013, we released our AZ series. AZ series, taking that same continuous duty operation and then making another adaptation here. Here, uh, instead of using the resolver feedback that was in the previous generations, we actually went with a multi-turn mechanical absolute encoder. And by doing that, we were able to eliminate the need for external sensors, uh, and external return to home operations. So creating that absolute system without the need of batteries um, and without the need of those external sensors. So just that third uh, generation, third evolution of our Alpha Step series is now within that AZ series of product. <laughs> so to break down how Alpha systems, how they work, how they operate, uh, on the left-hand side here, we can see a reference um, that's referenced from our AZ product brochure. It's going to be page three. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, in the handout section, there's going to be a downloadable PDF for that AZ series, so you can see a reference to that information. What this simplified block diagram, again, is showing um, as we kind of expand from the previous simplified block diagram is the operation of the Alpha Step system. So the operation of the Alpha Step system, it's going to operate like a stepper motor in that we're going to send position control to the system, send information on how many steps to go. We want that excitation to go to the motor. We want that motor to start running. And as that motor is running, we want to receive feedback from that sensor, that absolute mechanical encoder, back to our driver. And then what's going to happen is it'll go through a deviation counter, make sure that the information that's receiving back is the same as the information that it sent. If it is, it'll continue integration. If it's not, it'll take over control and it'll do an operation to try to correct for that position. So on the fly, it'll try to make that correction to the appropriate position within the system. We call that our keep and step method, uh, our way of having that closed loop control system take control of the motor, switching sequence in order for that stepper motor to get back into its appropriate position. Uh, once it's back into its appropriate position, it'll go back to the standard operation of a standard stepper motor. Um, however, if it's not able to um, correct for its position, an alarm will generate and the system will stop. Therefore, just letting you know that something in the application, something in the machine 
there's an issue where the motor cannot generate enough torque to get past a certain issue. It cannot make its step command that it was commanded. So again, the benefits there, uh, don't have to worry about making that correction. That corrective action happens inside of the driver um, and that correction is gonna be happening on the fly if and when necessary. So creating that closed loop stepper motor system. Looking at how it does that, we need to break apart that absolute mechanical encoder structure and see internally how it generates its positional information. So inside of that ABSO encoder, there's gonna be four mechanical gears, um, which are gonna have magnets on top of them. So based on the rotation of those four gears and the magnet detection sensor detecting the orientation of the magnet, it's gonna generate unique positioning information in order to determine what the output shaft location is. So here, it's just gonna reference um, characteristics of directionals from the magnets, and that's gonna to relate to some positional information to the APSO sensor. From there, it's gonna be determined by the driver of, of that position. And because of the mechanical structure, we're able to get enough unique positionings to be able to maintain an 1800 revolution absolute system. So 1800 revolutions of position retention without the need of backup batteries, uh, also without the need of any external systems like home sensors or limit sensors. As we compared before, I also wanna look at the speed torque curves of the alpha step system compared to a servo system. So again, looking at that same servo motor reference from before, where we had 0.6 Newton meters of torque um, at that continuous duty region, and then again, a higher value of torque in the limited duty region. We can see here overlaid in orange is gonna be the alpha step system of that comparable size. So the continuous duty region of the alpha step system here is actually gonna start at two Newton meters of torque and continue all the way through that 0.6 Newton meters up to, in this case, 4,000 RPM. So our previous comparison of your standard open loop stepper motor um, took that 0.6 Newton meters out to 1,000 RPM. The advancements and the manufacturing into the alpha step system actually has taken that to um, over to the 4,000 RPM range. And again, ranges are gonna be dependent on size of the motor, um, but here for that similar comparison, uh, we're using that comparison of before. And the main thing I wanna point out here is gonna be the region of continuous duty that happens, um, and again, below that 4,000 RPM speed. So having the potential for a continuous duty product uh, having, you know, if you want to reference 1,000 RPM and 1.5 Newton meters, um, going along with that information of that compact system, being able to have that compact size, but being able to provide that high performance. So going off of some of the notes that we had from before, uh, again, the servo motor system is still going to have that superiority for long distance and fast speeds. Um, achieving that 5,000, that 5,500 RPM speed uh, is gonna be something that the servo system is gonna do really good for those robotics and those textile applications. Um, however, for those short, quick positioning moves, um, for some of those CNC machines, for 3D printers, um, uh, other things that might be in the medical field where you're looking at a lot smaller uh, of an application, uh, you're not actually gonna reach those speeds. So what's gonna happen is the stepper motor is gonna have that superiority for those short, quick positioning moves. Another thing that aids the stepper motor system, and in this case, the alpha step system in those short, quick positioning moves is gonna be the responsiveness of the system. So comparison here on the right and on the left, um, we have on the left-hand side, a servo motor system, which is gonna have your uh, command position, which is gonna be a trapezoidal motion profile. From there, the actual command position, there's gonna be some delay based on that error-based response, um, creating that difference in its actual position and its um, new commanded position. So a little bit of delay up front in order to get to its position. Uh, and then also towards the end, having a little bit of settling time to maintain that new position to make sure that it, it settles to its actual position command. On the reverse side, 
the command motion profile and actual motion profile of steppers and alpha step is actually going to be highly synchronized to its command motion profile. So when we have those um, applications that have um, specific commands that go into another command, so we're doing um, processes of applications, uh, or again, those kind of applications similar to 3D printers, um, where we're doing uh, one motion stopping, next motion stopping, um, the overall responsiveness of the system can also help with the overall throughput of the system. So whether it's that higher torque uh, in that lower speed range or that synchronization of command when we're doing multiple stop and go applications, stepper motors and alpha step systems um, can help increase the throughput of those stop start machines. The last comparison I wanna make here between alpha step and servo is gonna be the inertia load characteristics. So in our alpha step system, Recommendation is going to be that you maintain below a 30 times rotor inertia multiplication, so the load inertia less than 30 times the rotor inertia. Depending on the servo motor that's being used, sometimes that permissible load inertia can go up to uh, 10, 30, 50. Uh, I've even seen um, like a maximum of 100 times the rotor inertia. Um, but when you get into those higher ranges, that 30 times, the 50 times, the 100 times even, those typically are going to require some manual tuning and requiring the system to maintain that set value, um, to not have any differences, to not have any load fluctuations or load changes um, in those higher inertia systems. <laughs> um, but in this case, I'll take an example of a 30 times rotor inertia for alpha step and a 50 times for servo. Going through that same comparison before, if we look at the multiplication output of the rotor inertia of the servo versus the rotor inertia of the stepper, or in this case, again, the AZ alpha step system, we can see that the AZ series actually has more than twice the permissible inertia that that equivalent servo motor would have. So it's able to uh, operate within a higher amount of load inertia. Another thing to consider is gonna be that load and inertia changes. Uh, if we have applications that are gonna be um, stacking, uh, adding, removing, uh, whether the load is being increased or the load is being decreased, that can affect the overall gain, the overall tune value of the servo motor, which like I said before, can add to the overall hunting, that jitteriness or that oscillation of the servo motor system. Here going with the stepper motor at its core, the alpha step system is not impacted by those load fluctuations or those load changes. So whether you're adding load or removing load or just having a high load inertia in general, the alpha step system is going to be great for being able to maintain those types of applications. In our alpha step system, uh, another thing to call out to is going to be the communication and the network protocols that are going to be used within the system. Um, as I mentioned before, um, pulse and direction signals, um, the common ones in the servo or in the stepper systems, just having that pulse and direction. Um, in alpha step, we also have the availability of drivers that communicate specifically for network communication. Um, calling out Ethernet IP, calling out EtherCAT, um, there's also RS-45 drivers and some multi-axis drivers that'll facilitate SSCNet. Mechatrolink and EtherCAT. So again, depending on what type of upper level control or what PLC is there, um, there's a driver that's going to be able to be paired with that upper level of control. So again, the controllability is handled in the driver and the motor, no issue or no worry about keeping that motor in step, and then being able to receive that information or that data back from the motor to the upper level of control. <clears throat> So some of the big names in network communication nowadays, um, we're looking at names like Ethernet IP. So for customers that have uh, Allen Bradley PLCs, um, we have a downloadable EDS file, which will allow for uh, easy integration with that PLC. We also have downloadable AOIs or add-on instructions, which are gonna help with any um, programming or setup in Studio 5000, uh, otherwise known as RS Logic software. 
<clears throat> from there, um, downloading the AOIs from our website, uh, we have an instruction guide, which is going to be helpful and be a walkthrough of basically how to set up the system, as well as how to use those AOIs. Simply dragging and dropping AOIs from the control organizer over and onto the ladder logic of the programming. Again, just kind of one reference to those AOIs, reference from our AOI user guide that's also downloadable. Now, another big name here, EtherCAT. Uh, EtherCAT, we also have the downloadable ESI file, which is going to help with seamless integration with Beckoff, as well as Trio Motion PLCs. Again, a lot of that, just kind of easy, simple integration with that upper level of controls. So starting with an example from the top, um, depending on that upper level of control, whether it's that Trio Motion or Beckoff uh, EtherCAT PLC, that host controller device, then pairing with one of our options. Uh, here, an option for multi-axis driver uh, compatible with that EtherCAT communication, uh, or going with a single axis driver, whether it's an AC input or DC input system. <clears throat> then pairing with our AZ family of products. So we talked about the background of the AZ motor, the incorporation, the benefits, the features of it. Um, that motor is then equipped with multiple different products that we offer as well. Things like gripper systems, uh, DG, our DG series, which is going to be a rotary actuator. We also have slides um, as well as cylinders, compact linear systems for our compact linear cylinders, round shaft options, and geared options. So all of those different options, all of those different things to automate uh, a different type of machine, it's going to still come down to the same controllability, that same base of that AZ series. So having that same reference to controllability between all of those different lineups of products. So fulfilling different applications. Uh, here showing some more examples of rotary arm assembly applications where uh, facilitation of a hollow rotary actuator is being paired with the gripper system. We have our XY stages where here we can see um, two of those slide applications or two of those sliders being used in a pipetting application. Cylinders being used for stackers and sorters um, and our compact linear systems uh, being helpful for camera focusing. Uh, or again, we also referenced previously that pipetting application being able to have that precision in motion. <clears throat> With that understanding of that AZ series being its core, we've also uh, a free software, which is going to be our MEX E02 software. It's a free download um, that can be used to help do parameter changes, help set up. You can also get a reference to uh, teaching remote operation, which is going to help with the initial setup, as well as being able to run diagnosis. Um, and you can also get references to different statuses, um, status and monitor information. Software is not a requirement, but it is a nice, helpful tool, and again, a free tool to be able to use to get some advantages of doing some quick setup stuff, uh, running some tests, running some diagnosis on the system. <clears throat> Last thing that I want to bring out about the AlphaStep system, uh, when we talk about network and we talk about communication, um, that information that's being provided to the system, as well as information being provided from the system, to the upper level of controls. So integrating with things like IoT or the Internet of Things, just being able to constantly monitor, constantly able to get feedback from the system. Um, just some quick examples of motor temperature, driver temperature, uh, overall uh, distance amount, the odometer, the trip meter as far as how far it's gone for linear distances and, and rotary distances, uh, as well as monitoring the torque output and seeing what percentage of torque is being used and seeing if there's any changes in torque. Just to bring it back to a wrap up conclusion, so we reviewed the typical breakdown for when to use a servo and when to use a stepper. We also then compared the benefits of the servo system and the benefits of the step system, taking information and we discussed the improvements that Oriental Motor has made towards the stepper motors. 
and how those improvements have provided examples of applications and improvements to those specific applications and typical um, considerations or concerns of a standard step promoter. <clears throat> Going from there, then we then uh, introduce that incorporation of the alpha step system, um, generating a system that takes the benefits of servo and the benefits of stepper and groups it into one uh, alpha step product. And we talked about the servo versus alpha step comparisons and looked at some um, combinations of alpha step motors, uh, alpha step actuators, and those drivers with network communication. <laughs> at this point, I'm going to kick it back over to JD, Austin, um, Dom, and Mike just to kind of open up some discussion, um, have some questions, have some answering time, uh, start talking about. Um, some discussion unmuted uh yeah thanks thanks john for the presentation um wanted to open it up for any any questions that you guys may have or uh systems that you guys are working on um we, we can unmute as necessary um but i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the presentation and got took away something from it um jd if you have any uh questions or, or would like to say something uh, please go ahead no i don't see anything in the uh chat window so I think a lot of people are pondering but uh want to just uh say huge thanks to john and the entire oriental motor team for the presentation um if Anybody has questions, feel free to reach out to Mike, myself, uh, Austin directly. Again, um, you know, our goal is to try and take care of you, the customer, right? So uh, once again, we invite you to check out Oriental Motor and PowerMation websites for uh, the latest and greatest in any product and industry news. Thanks everybody for attending. Um, have a great day.